Okay, so here we go with chapter three. This is section 3.1, uh, all about if statements. Don't forget, we have the links uh, when you see these in, uh, in the PowerPoint. Also, they are in Canvas at the bottom of the module for chapter three. But this is the link for the video that Tony Gaddis did talking about if statements. Okay, so anyway, so that's there. All right, so let's talk about control structures. Okay, we are talking about, when we talk about control, control structure, we're talking about, you can see just simple definition here, the design that controls the order in which statements execute. What we've been doing is sequential programming. So we've been doing, we've been using sequence structure. Uh, so our statements uh, execute in the order that they appear. We just start at line one goes to line two, line three, line four, and we just work our way through, right? Uh, so that's what we've been doing things. What we're going to do in this chapter is introduce decision structures. And decision structures for us, uh, we will be using if statements and a few other things too, so along the way. You get to check this out, right? So, uh, and the way that we, the way that this is going to work, only specific things will happen if a condition exists. So if I say, if is it less than 40 degrees outside? that's a yes or a no right so it's something measurable that we can say uh yes it is so maybe you're you know going to have to bring a coat with you uh if it's not okay i can wear shorts i'm good to go right uh so anyway so we have a decision structure sometimes you'll see it referred to as selection structure i think in our book i think it's a decision most of the time and uh most of the time online you'll see decision two but sometimes you'll see this uh selection listed so anyway just throwing that out there all right so we're going to take a look at a flow chart in a second. In a flow chart, uh, diamond represents uh, our Boolean, so a true-false condition that must be tested. Okay, so we're testing these conditions, uh, and as it's being executed, it will check the condition, and you it will only happen when it's true. Okay, so I love this single alternative decision structure. So we have one path on here, right? So if it's not true, boom, you're out of there. So let's look at an example of that. Okay, so here's one uh, just right from the book. So you're asking a question as this comes in. Is it cold outside? By the way, this is terrible. Uh, you want something that's measurable. So cold outside is, is relative, right? So uh, if it's, you know... 80 degrees, my wife, is, or, or less, my wife is going to bring a, uh, a sweatshirt with her or whatever, a hoodie with her, and she, you know, she swears it's cold outside. If it's 50 degrees, I'm still wearing shorts. So uh, this is relative. So use something that's measurable that that uh, that isn't relative to, to whoever you're asking the question. So we'll use in a program in the next section, we're going to use, is it less than 40 degrees? Okay, but just for our, our example here, in fact, let's imagine that says that. So is it less than 40 degrees right here? And we say, um, yes, it's true. So you're going to wear a coat. If it's not, let's say it's 110 outside. Uh, then we completely skip this whole section because it's false. So we will just kind of roll right through here. This section just gets skipped. So maybe this this little little piece right here is, you know, whatever lines of code in the program. You'll see if you're using uh, the visualizer and Python tutor, you're going to skip right by this. Okay, so it makes it makes it really cool. And as I mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna do this in the next section. You'll see a program that, that's basically this that we'll get to do. Okay, so how does this work in Python? Okay, so our first line. And Python's been pretty forgiving with the way that we do things. And if we space things, you know, if we have a space after commas or whatever, you know, it's pretty forgiving. This is one area where your syntax does matter, okay? So as we start this out, they will all look like this. And we'll talk about this second in a second. But uh, the first line is the if clause. So here we go with if. And uh, this will be colored. It is a reserved word. So um, you'll see that. The condition is something like, is it, we would say if, and then we'd have a variable, uh, you know, less than, you know, 40, like we were saying a second ago, or is X greater than five or, you know, whatever the condition might be. Okay. So you set that. Okay. Then we have to use a colon. All right. So that must be at the end of the line. You'll notice as you hit enter in our IDLEs like Python Tutor and in REPL, it, as soon as you do this and you hit return, it will immediately indent uh, so you have this space here. You must have this. This statement cannot be back here on the same section as this uh, because it will re not recognize it. Okay, so this is our order. This is our syntax. We have to have a space here. Now, this could be like, you know, two spaces or something. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tab, uh, but it has to be consistent. So if you start with a tab, then come down here, enter another tab. If you start with two spaces, have two spaces here. So this has to be the same. And you can have as many statement lines as you'd like. So if your condition is true, you're going to do this, then you're going to do this, then you could do lots of other things. It doesn't really matter. As soon as you're done with it, 
you, you don't have to have any kind of like end or, or anything. It will just simply, as you hit enter, you bring this back to the same. See how this is equal here? So the I and the S are the same. This statement now is outside of the if statement. Okay. So for example, if we were asking uh, if the weather outside is less than 40 degrees and it's not, we skip lines two and three and go straight to line four. So we'll just simply go, boom, check this, and it'll go, nope. And it comes down here, and it'll execute this. Okay, so position will matter. And we're going to play with this a lot, so um, you'll, get to, you'll get to see this uh, in action here in a little bit. In fact, in the next section, we do a, uh, a program. We get to mess around with it. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide real quick. So Boolean expressions and relational operators. This is a lot of terminology, not really that big a deal. It's a math thing. Uh, so mathematicians of Boolean, we refer to it, sometimes you'll see bool, so as, um, you know, a type. And so if you are in another language, you might actually type bool uh, to say, hey, this particular variable is a bool type. And, you know, much like we would use int, or float, uh, those or, or you know, or string, the same kind of thing. So for us, what we're talking about here is we're just testing this. So it's just a true/false thing. Um, is it true? Is it not? So on this one, you know, is a greater than b? Well, it's true if a is greater than b. Otherwise, it's false. Okay. And the relational operators that we're using, typically we're going to use less than and greater than for a lot of things, but we can use other things too. And you'll get to see some of these other things uh, on the next slide too. So um, you're just you're just checking these. Okay. So how would we write it let's say we have greater than right uh and we had less than if you wanted to write less than or equal to right so we can do that on the next slide and here we go so greater than or equal to or less than or equal to that's how you write those you can never put the equal sign first okay you will get an error so you must leave with either less than or greater than on this oops greater than or less than uh and then the equal sign all right, so those operators, those relational operators are going to test that relationship that way. It's great, uh, and we'll we'll see some examples again of this. All right, so now this is kind of a new one, two equal signs, okay? This one is going to check to see if two things are, in fact, equal to another. Don't get it confused with the assignment operator where you say x equals 7, okay, if you use one little sign there. If you write if x equals equals with this assignment operator one equal sign seven it will be true every single time because you're assigning it okay so you have to be really careful of that versus is x double equal sign two is actually how we would do equal all right so we'll get to play with that a little bit too this is a kind of a fun one too with the exclamation point equal sign uh where this operator determines whether the operands are not equal so this is kind of a fun one to use when you're writing an, an if statement in too so um so anyway so this is this is fun stuff. I know I get too excited about this stuff, but uh, but it is actually fun. So let's look at some example statements, and you'll see in here. So it, you know, here's what we're asking with this particular expression. So we have x greater than y. Well, is x greater than y? So if we were writing, you know, if, and then we'd have something happen, right? So less than y, you get that right. Uh, so here we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So you can see the, this piece here. Here we go with the double equal sign. So x double equal sign y that is our official equal so is x equal to y all right down here we have the way this one is is uh said here we have is x not equal to y so when we write our statements out we're going to check this and we'll say if it's not equal to y then you're going to do something all right so these are these are just some little samples that you'll see there okay so if we come over here let's look at this particular uh, problem and we'll actually do a problem very similar to this later on uh, so using the boolean expression we're using the greater than relational operator so on this one we're coming down and we're checking this and and we're imagining if you see sales greater than fifty thousand dollars maybe we're checking uh, you know our sales staff to see if they deserve a bonus okay so if they've had sales greater than fifty thousand dollars that's true and we're going to go ahead and give them the bonus. If their sales were less than this, anything but greater than fifty thousand dollars, so maybe they had forty nine thousand dollars worth of sales, completely skip this section. So it just rolls down here. We test it. it is false. We keep going. Okay. So no bonus for them. Okay. Uh, one last thing for section three point one. Uh, here we go. A little, you know, nice little check in here. So if balance see on this little these are equal to so if the balance equals zero 
that's one way of doing it right so and as we're setting these up so if the payment does not equal the balance then we might have something about charging interest you know those kinds of things okay and you can also set them up uh inside of another block or another function so let's take a look at this code okay so this is the link on the left hand side and uh, of that powerpoint so this this is this link right here so this is the original test average program that we have and you'll notice on this one if you just kind of, we'll just take a look at the code very quickly but um so you know three test scores displays an average congratulates them if the average is a high score so high score here we go with this oh this is terrible this should be all caps um so we have high score set here at 95 Remember, if we're going to use a constant, and this is something that technically should be a constant, this would be all capital letters in here. So just remember that. Uh, all right, so here we go. Uh, here's our inputs. Notice we're taking ints. Well, that's another thing I changed too. Sorry, I stole this right for the book. Uh, I would put this a float because, you know, you could get in, I don't know, 87.5% on your test or 87.8 or whatever. Um, so I, I would give the flexibility of a float in here too. So sorry, I'm just <laughs> looking at this as we're looking, as we're going along. Uh, all right, so we have um, already two changes that we make, all caps for constant, <laughs> floats for this instead. Uh, and then we're going to roll through, we're asking for these three inputs, and then here is average. So it's a real simple little average thing. You notice in parentheses, then divided by three. And then we're going to print the average here's where our test comes in for the if statement in fact i'm going to pop back over to here so you can see colored in all right so if the average is a high score you're going to congratulate the user okay so if the average is greater than or equal to the high score which is 95 then you're going to print congratulations that's a great average okay so we're going to go ahead and test that real quick right so let's see so if i say next i'll input i don't know should we be above it we're going to say that we are in fact a super student so we're gonna give us all really high scores in here and you can see them being stored over here also displayed up here so now when we calculate average here we go 98 so now watch as it comes down here so we're gonna say the average score is which is up here but I'm leaving it so I can use the next now notice how it went to this if the average is greater than or equal to high score which it is then it's gonna go ahead and print congratulations that's a great average and that's what would have happened up here Okay, so um, so that's what's done. Now, if we run this again, we'll just go back here, visualize again, and I'm going to say next, enter score, um, add kind of an off day, we'll say, 78, right? Uh, maybe this is another off day. I don't know. I'm just getting under. Uh, and then I had 88. Okay, so now on this one, when you watch this one, as we step through, uh, we calculate the average. Here's our average. So it's going to say the average is... When it comes on this if statement, if the average is greater than or equal to high score, test it, and then nothing. Okay, so we're done. And there we go. The average score is 81. All right, so, um, so anyway, so that's that, uh, that little piece. Now, let's say on this slide we talked about putting a block inside another block. And we're talking about an if statement here. So let's take a look at this code. I'm going to go back to this. And I won't run it this time, but you can just see it. Uh, so here we have an if statement for the same thing. So if the average is, is greater than or equal to the high score, it's going to print congratulations. Inside this if statement, inside this loop, inside this piece right here, notice how it's indented exactly where this is. So still part of the same if statement. We're now having another if statement. So if the average is equal to, using two equal signs, 100. So you aced all three of these tests. Indent again to be down part of this if statement, it's going to print, you are amazing. Okay. So it's another way of checking it. So as the code goes through, let's say my average was 98 again. So the average is going to be greater than the high score, which is 95. And it's going to print congratulations. When it tests it next inside, it's going to say if the average is, is equal to, which our average was 898, right? Not equal to hundred. So it's not going to print amazing. So it's still saying congratulations. I guess I kind of left the other line in there about, um, I don't know, your grade or what, what did I say? I can't remember what the books say. This, oh, that is a great average. I took that line out, sorry. Uh, but anyway, so it would be good and you can do that. But anyway, this is a good way of um, indenting another if statement inside. So we put this inside. So, and we'll look at a few other ways of doing that uh, and some alternate methods uh, later on. But this is a quick and easy way of doing this piece. Okay, so that's it for section 3.1. We're going to do a lot more with code and add a lot of uh, other things in here as we go along through this whole chapter. So should be fun.